going to speak briefly um, from the law enforcement side. Um, as was stated, I'm the director of uh, DUMEG, the DuPage Metropolitan Enforcement Group, and what we are is a multi-jurisdictional drug task force. Uh, the people that work in our unit do undercover drug work. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of that stuff in TV shows and movies, etc. and that's what we do. Uh, Villa Park Police Department is a member of DUMEG, um, as are several of the other uh, the local agencies here. And what we've seen over the past several years is a dramatic increase in the supply of heroin in this county. Uh, if you've paid attention at all to, to the news medias, whether it's in print or TV, and I'm assuming that's why everybody's here tonight, is because the heroin problem has become what it is in this county. And I will say, first I'll steal a, a, a line from our state's attorney, from Bob Berlin, and say uh, that this is something, this is a problem that we will never arrest and prosecute our way out of. Um, we have our part, being the law enforcement side, to do what we do, but it's also it's a multifaceted program. It takes people like these folks up here tonight, it takes education, it takes treatment, um, it, it takes concerned parents and the community. So it takes everybody to be involved in this to make a dent in this problem and hopefully reverse the trend that we've seen for at least the, the last five or six years. Um, this is my second time in drug enforcement. I did it a long time ago and when I was in back in the 90s we didn't see heroin almost at all. Hardly ever saw it. And if you did see it, it was the person where if you looked up an encyclopedia heroin addict and saw that strung out person, that's who your heroin user was back in, in the 90s and earlier. Today that's changed. Now it's the high school athlete. Uh, as the deputy chief just said, it's a 14 year old student at a, you know, in, a, in, a, in an upper middle class suburb. Um, so you don't know who it is. It could be your neighbor, the businessman holding a, a, a steady job. Could be anybody. The demographics have changed. Um, so we all need to do our part in trying to address this problem. Just some, some statistics over the last five years, what DUMEG has seen, and again, our, our focus, the only job we have as a drug task force is drug enforcement. So if you look at drug enforcement like on a three-tier level, at the local level, for instance, the Villa Park Police Department, they deal mostly with possession cases. The police officers out on the road, they stop somebody who is in possession of a narcotic or an illicit drug, they get arrested. What we do is we're the middle guys, the next tier up. We concentrate on dealers, particularly at the local level. We're looking for the suppliers to your kids um, and not so much the individual who is, has possession of user amounts of individual illicit drugs. And then at the top level, you have the federal agencies, the DEA, the FBI, who concentrate on the organized criminal groups and the transportation groups bringing drugs in here from outside of our country. So just some numbers, what's happened over the last five year period from 2009 to 2013, I pulled some stats out of our records. In 2009, 6% of all the drug uh, purchases that we did were heroin related, just 6%, which isn't a very high, but that still was an increase over the previous several years when it was down in the three to 4% range. In 2013, last year, of all the drug purchases we did, which was over 280, 26% of those drug purchases were heroin. That's a huge increase. And I'm not a mathematician. I didn't take the time to figure out what the difference was, but it's large. So uh, that's, that's a trend that needs to be reversed for the safety of, you know, for our citizens here in this county. Another trend for seizures in that same five-year period, 2009 comparative with 2013. In 2009 total, we seized less than 500 grams of heroin throughout the whole year. In 2013, we seized over 2,500 grams of heroin. That's, that's about three pounds, nearly three pounds of of heroin that we seized in 2013. That's a large amount. And a lot of that was 
attributed to a couple of cases, pretty large cases that we did, that we targeted groups, particularly gangs, dealing on the west side of Chicago. We did a lot of our work in 2013 outside of DuPage County. The reason we did that, uh, we're guided by the chiefs that, that oversee our, our drug task force, the chiefs of police, and the state's attorney's office, and we realized the problem is the supply is coming from the west side of, the, of Chicago. That's where the heroin is coming from. Obviously, in the bigger picture, it's not coming from there. It's coming from Mexico and South America for the most part. But our kids and our people here in this county are getting their heroin from the west side of Chicago. So we concentrated on that, and we ended up doing a very substantial case, arresting over 30 people, most of them with ties to gangs in Chicago. Many of them were residents of DuPage County, not with ties to gangs, but that were distributing, purchasing the, the heroin from the gangs in Chicago, bringing it back out to the county, and reselling it out here to users in the county. So that's a pretty substantial increase going from less than 500, it was about 370 something grams, which is not a, a large amount, to over 2,500 grams of cocaine last year. Also in arrests, back in 2009, less than 10% of our arrests were uh, heroin related. <clears throat> Excuse me. We make over 275 arrests a year, strictly drugs. That's all we do again is drugs. Last year, 21% of our arrests were heroin related. So again, a substantial increase. Um, the arrest difference just in one year, 2012 to 2013, was a 15% increase in heroin arrests that we have done. So um, some pretty substantial increase in, in what we're seeing out there over the last five year period. We're hoping that this is a cyclical trend, that between education, prevention, treatment, and enforcement, that we'll see this ebb you know, turn and start to go on the downside. We've seen that with other drugs in the past. I can tell you right now, cocaine, the supply of cocaine, both powder and crack form in the county is greatly reduced to what it was years ago. Um, I don't know that we could take credit for that. I think it's a combination of things, education uh, and everything else, that I, you know, treatment, prevention and enforcement. But it could also be uh, uh, not a good sign. It could also be that the, uh, the drug trafficking cartels are reducing their supply to the Chicago area and increasing their supplies of heroin. I don't know. Uh, none of the experts seem to have an answer on that. But uh, it, for whatever the uh, reason and answer, the, uh, the cocaine supply has been, been reduced. One thing I want to touch on uh, real briefly is prescription drugs. That is the number one problem drug area, uh, area of drug abuse in this country right now. The number one growth. And particularly, um, and I know this will be discussed, how heroin addicts, many heroin addicts, not all, but how many heroin addicts become heroin addicts is through the use of prescription drugs particularly the opiates, oxycodone, oxycontin, Vicodins. So they're extremely addictive. Um, there's a pattern that's uh, been shown. There there's a, was a study conducted by the Robert Crown Center out of Hinsdale. Very good study. Uh, I would suggest if you have the time, go online you can, to their website. You can pull it off and read it. That shows many high school, college athletes that get injured. Um, you'll hear a little bit about this tonight, I'm sure. Get injured. Uh, start down a prescription uh, given to them by their physician. They get hooked on, uh, you know, addicted to those drugs. One thing leads to another and uh, unfortunately they end up on heroin which is much more readily available and much cheaper than trying to buy prescription drugs uh, after your prescription has run out, trying to buy it on the street in a black market. So be concerned about that, about the rise of prescription drugs. So, and then just briefly, um, you know, some of the things to look for as parents, uh, areas of concern, if you have any suspicions with friends, whatever, changes in, in physical appearance, changes in attitude, uh, hygiene, your children or your, your children's friends showing up with new friends, if you will, and, and not so much the old friends that they palled around with for years, uh, avoiding family get-togethers. 
um, additional mileage, increased mileage on your car, or tolls on the iPass that you're not familiar with. You wonder how all of a sudden, not, how do we get this extra mileage on our car and the extra tolls on our iPass? Um, lying becomes very common. Um, and items of value missing in your home. Pretty much most heroin addicts uh, that have to keep their habit going are either stealing, prostituting themselves, or committing other criminal acts, selling drugs in order to sustain their habit. So uh, items missing around the house, items missing from work, etc., is a common clue. Um, Again, basically, you know, I know I throw out a lot of little numbers to you, but it, we've seen a dramatic rise here in DuPage County. We're doing our part between doing educational programs such as this and arresting dealers. Um, but again, it's a big picture thing between uh, uh, several groups that everybody's got a stake in it, primarily parents, teachers, everybody else. So uh, it takes, you know, as has been said, it takes a, a community to make a difference and, and hopefully we're making our little our little dent. So thank you very much.